Good afternoon, good Erev Shabbos, and welcome to BJC Mitzvah today, number 123, part 6 of the long one, folks. We've been going through this one for a long time. Mitzvah day keeps your soul in its way. The obligation of the Ola Vayurit offering. And here we go. We are in the laws of the mitzvah. The laws of the mitzvah include that each of these four sins obligate the one who committed it to bring a female sheep or female goat as its offering in consonance with the known law of the fixed chatas offering. Again, that's a sin offering. And he cannot exempt his obligation by bringing the other offerings described in this passage, a bird offering or a flower offering, unless he is a pauper. And if he is a pauper and he brings a female sheep or female goat as his offering, he also has not fulfilled his obligation. The reason for this is that since the Almighty, blessed is he, had pity on the pauper, exempting him by means of this bird or flower offering from any further obligation, it is not proper for him to press himself to bring an offering that is more expensive than what he can afford. Very important principle there. From this ruling, every perceptive person should take counsel not to incur expenses that exceed what is appropriate according to his finances. Some people definitely spend beyond their means, folks. Not a good thing. For excessive spending is a cause for one to steal from other people when he seeks that which is he is when he seeks that which he is accustomed to and does not find it, I lacks the finances to obtain it. The Chinuch records laws pertaining to one whose financial status changed as regard to this offering after he had already designated money for his offering. Generally, funds that were designated for an offering have the status of monetary sanctity and money so designated may not be used for mundane purposes. When the money is used to purchase the offering for which it was designated, the sanctity leaves the money it is mechulal, deconsecrated. The offering becomes sanctified in its place, and the money may then be used for mundane purposes. The Chinuch explains what is done with the money if the level of offering for which it had been designated changed. The sages have also stated in Croesus, that's the name of a Gemara, that if one was wealthy when he incurred an Olivierat obligation, and he designated money to purchase a female sheep or female goat for his offering, as is appropriate. And then he became poor and requires the money for his basic needs. He should use some of the money to buy two turtle doves or two young doves and declare these funds have been deconsecrated with their sanctity being transferred onto these birds, after which he may derive personal benefit from all the money that remains. Similarly, if a moderately poor sinner designated money for birds for his offering, and he then becomes even poorer and requires the money for his basic needs. He should deconsecrate the money onto a tenth eighth of flour for his offering. And he may then derive personal benefit from the money. Similarly, if a very poor person designated money for the purchase of a tenth eighth of flour for his offering, and he then became wealthy. This is a cool mitzvah, huh? He should add funds to the designated money. And he should bring a female sheep or female goat offering. One is considered wealthy in regard to this matter as long as he has the means to buy the more expensive offering. Okay, we will continue. God willing, after Shabbos, have a wonderful Shabbos. See you, God willing, tomorrow night.